Don't ever underestimate the heart of a champion. <laughs> Welcome. This is the Sports Chat Podcast. My name is John Trapp, Mr. Qual, and the one, the only, the never, never duplicated Christopher C. Rod Rodriguez. How you doing, sir? How do you feel? Hey, what did do original OG of the small ball before small ball became a thing? <laughs> What's yes, up? Sir. That was Chris's nickname in high school. Hell yeah, small ball. <laughs> Got a story about small ball. I've been ready to get up on the sports chat uh, podcast, John, because when I heard they were they were implementing small ball, small ball, I'm like, yo, they talking about small ball without me? What? Uh, <laughs> let me let me let me come back. Let me come back for this one. All right, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a little talk, rock and talk, rock and shop. You know, again, getting into that small ball era that we 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 were looking at. We we just defeated the Memphis Grizzlies. We just defeated the Utah Jazz. I know you you haven't been here for a while, but we were like eight and two in the last ten games on playing on this small ball, uh, Mister Coco. Need, but you need a center. How can you play without a center? Oh my God! Have you seen the openness of the court? And guess what tonight was? Guess what tonight, Mister oh. Travis Scott bobblehead night, and one of the. Uh, Five people that were lucky enough to get this Travis Scott bobblehead. I can't was, even. Listen, I can't even tell you what I had to do in the corner of the of the uh, alley uh, ooh, over there by Toyota hold Center. Up. What? Let's just put it this way: I'm getting tested as we speak. I'm just playing. <laughs> just playing, dude. We, dude it's just, lit. <laughs> it's lit. <laughs> All right, oh, man. Sh- Don't bring that coronavirus stuff over here. Oh, bro. he said it. Yeah. He said it. Uh, not allowed to speak about that. So. Oh, I, right. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Ah, uh, well, that you should be asking yourself because you're sitting next to me, brother. But I, I still want to know what you had to do. Anyways, anyways. Had to be your friend. Sorry, sorry. we're going to get a little bit into the NBA. You know how we do. This is, hey, the people's podcast, right? That's what we say, right? That's what we say. Sports, sports chat podcast you know we, we showing love to h town always baby texas sports uh we're gonna get a little bit into that nfl and the astro just started up all over again mm. in the preseason of the the without the swinging and the banging yeah well man, that's all good we'll no. swinging just no banging yeah a lot of swinging but <laughs> although, definitely no banging. although uh miles straw had two two one inside one outside home runs today so hey that's a little spot but did you see the swing and miss after the booze that ran down on George Springer today Whew. man you know what I think he walked away booing himself at that point hey and then I would have we got we got none other than uh the CBA of the NFL coming up uh oh hold on hold on hold on pause pause stop the presses man I don't want to get what's your magic number Chris What's your magic number? <laughs> like, what do you mean? What am I magic? I, I mean, is is it? I don't want to put your magic number because I don't really want to show your age because you old ass motherfucker today. Oh damn! <laughs> the one and only Christopher C. Rodriguez. We got to congratulate this man. Happy birthday, sir! Ah, <laughs> dang. Look at this rocket red for for the rocket showing love once oh, again. Man. Hey, hey, everybody, everybody. I should figure out what the hell Qual was doing. Like, dude, he's just going to leave like that. <laughs> yeah. oh, Ooh, damn. damn, that's We got a special guest in the house. He's off camera right now, but we got a special guest. We're all celebrating today. Uh, Eddie, Mr. Red Roddy. We got Qual. Happy birthday, Chris. Man. Birthday. Make a make wish. A wish. Yeah. Hold on, make a wish, man. Jesus Christ, but. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, I'm here. That was my, my, my wish. No, no, you can't tell us. Then it won't happen. Hey, man. Woo! And I ain't no shame in the game. Listen, 38 years old. 38. Damn. 38 oh, holding it down. Oh. Still younger than John. That's all that matters. <laughs> but I stopped counting at 35, so. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm still uh, 35, homie. Man, thank you guys, uh, you, man. You passed you me up three years ago. Uh, but you lie. You a damn lie, John. <laughs> cool. What? You, what'd you get him for your for for a present? Oh shit! Okay, don't don't. Hey, that's that's between them. That's between. I'll let them not, let them do that later on tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, Wait, it's anyway. coming. It's coming. Oh. God. <laughs> hey, I like her. I like that little beanie, bro. <laughs> what you got underneath that beanie, bro? Uh. <laughs> 
All right, all right. That's going left. We're just di- whole different podcast. So you whole come, say so you celebrate an old man's birthday and you bring cake and look, it just gets weird all of a sudden. Man. Hey man, you know we Sweet can't, we can't, there. we couldn't do weird. it unless we had, we could, we we had to do it this way, man. We we always gotta show love. Gotta embarrass you in the worst way, <laughs> worst way. My brother from another father, but actually, you know what? I was thinking about this. If if this was the Spider Verse, you would actually be my brother in the multiverse. Like I feel like you came through that 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 collider, that mo- molecule collider, and there you were. That makes a lot of sense, John. I mean, I know you're not as good looking as me. Oh, and you got the worst <laughs> part of the genes. That's I true. Get it. It's that's okay, true. but. Hey, you're my brother, bro. But again, Much that's love. that's your hey. So that's okay. <laughs> that's the thing about the multiverse is like that's your your universe. But my universe, I am the good, best looking one. You know what I mean? So that's a lot of ugly is. people. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all right, all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh yeah, I want to just go ahead and get into it, man. Um, Chris, man, you, you, it's been a couple couple weeks Absolutely. now. Small ball era is in full effect. Once yes. again, this is Sports Chat Podcast, getting into the Rockets talk. James Harden coming off, and bro, Westbrook from yesteryear, I mean, when I say that's last year, averaging triple dubs, is the Westbrook happening right now, man? Like, he's going from one end to the court, five, six seconds. Not even the second, seven second small ball that Dan Tony likes to implement when he was with the, the, the Phoenix Suns and Lynn Sanity. Now he's bringing it to the Houston Rockets, and this is actually what they envisioned to happen in the first place. No Capella, no problem. Coco, Jeff Green, man, what's the what, what, what? It's looking mighty nice right now. Well, you know, like as usual, every season, you know, in the beginning, you know, the haters come out full of tire. You know, they just got like that that hating persona, you know, just foaming from the mouth of just of haterism. They come out every year before the season starts and say something negative, something condescending. Most importantly, just complete doubt of the Houston Rockets. This year, of course, was, oh, they traded Chris Paul. They're bringing Westbrook. It's not going to work. Now, granted, we had a couple of trades in the offseason. We had uh, the Brow go to the Lakers, right? And then, of course, we had Kawhi Leonard and uh, uh, Paul George come together. But those two coming together, right, those two teams coming together, it's all beautiful. It's all lovely. It's going to be the two teams that's going to make it to the finals because God knows that Kawhi Leonard, who plays like every once in a while, um, and Paul George, who's coming off massive injuries, that was going to work better than the Houston Rockets. Um, Westbrook and Harden but funny now now we're in a situation where not only is small ball working but Westbrook who many said would not be able to play with Harden they're not only playing with each other but there's times where James Harden is letting Westbrook just run wild and what are we getting we're getting a beautiful sexy ass product on the on these courts today and I just want to shout out to all the haters out there that you may not think that small ball works, or you may not think that James Harden and, 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 and Russell Westbrook could work, but it's fucking working. So what the fuck you got to say now? That's all I want to say about that. Because now, this happens every year. You did go to the game um, versus, uh, what was it, Utah? Yeah. And, of course, you got the Cactus Jack, Travis Scott bobblehead, which was, we, I think you brought it up. Mm. The, that was New York. That was New York Knicks. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think you brought it up, but it's um, the same thing. New York Knicks, Utah Jazz, they're pretty much garbage. So yeah, yeah, go ahead. I see how you got this um, twisted. And he's like the first celebrity that, that besides, of course, Clutch or whatever, that uh, they had a bobblehead for. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Travis Scott, you know, it's lit. You know, representing. He was H-Town. at the game, huh? He was at the H-Town wearing all khaki. All khaki. All khaki. Yeah. <laughs> he looked like a like a a really like. Dope version of like uh, a paper bag. It was tight. <laughs> yeah, man. Brown I mean, paper bag. Like Josh was like, he looked at me. He goes, "When I get rich, I'm just gonna wear all our tone colors too." Yeah. I'm like, nice. I don't hey, know. man. That's that's what Kanye started, bro. Yeah, man. Get get with the earthy spirit. Man, do you do you feel like we are the most stylish team? Like you're you're a lot more in the style than Fuck I am. Fuck yeah. Like no doubt. What what do you what do you 
think about when you think about the rocket style. No, we first be- of all. Well, I think it's dope. I think we officially became the most stylish team once we traded Capella because he was really hurting the rest of the team. Because he'd come off the, You know what I'm talking he about? Tried, though. He tried, He would come he off tried. and you're like, yo, who put that together? Your mom's, yo. You know what I mean? Like, you feel like his mom was still dressing him. You know what I mean? Like, he wasn't... You know, it was just... It was weak. You know? I mean, the only person now I would say is weak as far as style goes is probably, like, Gordon. But then every once in a while, he surprises me. But the rest of the team, yo. But Westbrook comes up with some landed stuff, man. Like... Uh, I mean, that's um, always been him. Yo, he's our Andre that's... 3000, boy. But, but you, listen. You think so? Hell, let me tell you something. Yeah. That that cover Star of GQ, yeah. that, whole, that whole spread. That was nice. That was, that nice. was sick that was because sick. I, I've GQ always thought that Westbrook has that Andre 3000. Like, yeah, you may not. Listen, Andre 3000 wears stuff and so does Westbrook that we wouldn't wear because mm-hmm. we look stupid. But when he wears it because he's so passionate, he just looks But it's looks also dope. just his swagger. The exactly, way he pulls man. it off, you know. Swag. And you forget, or you, you know, I'm not, I know you don't forget, but not only do we have arguably the stylish person, the most stylish person in the NBA, but we have the biggest sneakerhead, the king sneakerhead. Fuck yeah, man. And PJ Tucker. King I, think, sneaker. I think he's underrated as far as the style. Like, Matter- out, out of the three, I put him, of course, Because people third, think about his sneakers Yeah, Yeah, match style. Yeah. But he, he, he matches hella well with it. And yeah, he, he man, he balls out. In- I, I, a person See, that's the thing, though. I don't think that Harden matches. Like I can understand the 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 Harden, Westbrook. Yeah, hard to be wearing some questionable shit sometimes. But I can understand Westbrook's you know Japanese flair style that he gets it from overseas, and I get that it's eccentric, it's different. We don't see it maybe from like right now, but we'll see it in Yo, two or three years. Look, right? West, so look, he's ahead of his time. Kanye, that bitch, and I get it. I give oh. him that. PJ Tucker, I give him his kicks. He's got. The he's very classy. He's also very very classy the way he right, dresses. Right. James Harden, I'm like. Oh. No, 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 you're tripping, you're tripping. Okay, see, that's uh, what, that's, that's so what let me, I'm asking. Let me explain to you about Harden. Harden understands that he's fucking gaudy. You gotta understand that he's gaudy. Yo, he is, when he dresses, like, he understands, like, that he's only gonna button his shirt up to, like, three, and he's gonna show his, his, his man chest hair, and he's gonna wear some lavish <laughs> shit, because at the end of the day, his game is, like, the way he dresses. It's in, it's, it's in uh, what's the word I'm looking for? innovative and mm-hmm. at the same time like he's not he's not scared to take chances and i okay. love that about him. Okay, okay listen fashion when people are like oh that's sh- oh that shit's horrible that shit ugly you're doing what you're supposed to mm-hmm. because guess what they're looking at you what about what okay so you got you got Harden style you got you got westbrook style and you got of course pj tucker right now let me ask you this best the worst that i've ever seen uh, Westbrook was not actually the the whole t shirt the holy t shirt. I, I I I could that's, I think he fair. he and Kanye collabed on that one and they got together and they did it. But he had some big ass holes in it. But whatever whatever. I'm gonna yo let, real fast before you say you've never seen a piece? homeless person on the street like they kind of look fly. No, <laughs> I never. have. There's some homeless I've people never out there that look seen fly that and thought about it. Okay, but that one piece it was like a it's like a off white one piece that. Uh, Westbrook wore the other day. Yeah, Bruh. it was a it was a onesie. And and? I think it was shorts. Oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't see that. You didn't and? see that? Yeah, it was a, it was a onesie short. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Bruh. it's called a it's called a jumper, bro. Use the right term. Bruh. you you, it, it's apparently he 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 designed that. Yeah, and he came I believe with, that. Yeah. Listen, I'm just jealous that I if I was to wear a jumper, it would be a whole full pantsuit on me. You know what I mean? For him, it's shorts, but for me. Like actually, it'd probably be like perfect wear, like the length for me. But other than that, you know what I mean. All right, so you give him a pass for that. Th- listen, that's what I'm saying. When- no, okay, okay. I'm just, I'm just asking. Now, would you give James Harden his pass for the MVP acceptance suit? suit? At this point, I feel like you've already been hating on. You should have won MVP like two years prior. You finally got the MVP because they had nobody else to give it to. Because Steph Curry was garbage that year. At this point, I feel like. Why not wear whatever the fucking ugly ass suit you got? Because at this point, it's like fuck everybody anyway. Okay, okay. Just saying. All right, all right, all a, right. That was a this I whole fuck you thing suit. Should have gave me my MVP a long time about ago. About playoff LeBron James in his suit. Oh, with the shorts. With the shorts. That shit was fly. That was his best outfit ever. I love what? that shit. That shit was. See, I, very... feel, I feel like people are gonna be on one side or the other. Wow. Either you love it well, or you hate it. You know what? Like for real though. Like I give you my props because you are like. One of the dudes that is up on style. You've always been in like that was all Italian design. Even those boots he was wearing was 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 just. Listen, what what why I loved about it so much is that 
any of us had pulled this shit off, we'd make fun of each other. Like, if I did this shit, right, like, right. what the fuck are you doing? Right, right. But because... But I feel like you're the only one that could give me reasons of why, even though you may think, or we may think it's fucking bunk and whack and, and, and just trash, you'd give me a reason to stop and pause and think, like, maybe, maybe he's got something. The way LeBron James' stature is and the way he's built, he pulled that shit off perfectly. Nah, man, them thighs is looking like they're about to... Boss. Nah, man. He, he, I'm Boss, telling you, man. He, uh, listen, listen. <laughs> any man, that, no homo. Pause, any, uh, <laughs> there it is. Any man that wears this, uh, uh, any man that can wear a, a sh- uh, like a, I guess you could say a, a suit and shorts, and with those boots that he was wearing, and walking with that much confidence, that's somebody I want taking the last shot. <laughs> right, only to miss right. it. We, we well, went left only on to this. miss Hold it. Up. Only what, to miss what about, it. What about Cam Newton, that headpiece, though? And them, <laughs> and them pigtails. Yeah, okay, okay. Off, off, off the whole NBA. Cam Newton, what you think about his style? Wow. Grandma. You know, Come on, bro. You I, cannot tell listen, me. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Cam Newton is already so eccentric and weird that I feel like... I have to talk. Listen, I have to listen. I have to talk to you about that guy off record, you know, because I, I have I have some feelings towards that because I if you guys ever get a chance, watch his his uh, YouTube show. Right, he's, right. He's mm. I'm trying to figure out why he's even still playing football because he just seems like he does not care anything about football. I think he's just hoping that they just cut him so he can just like ah. Well, you said it on this show. You said he he's done. I think he's done. I think he's beyond football now. This is the Sports Trap Podcast. We get into anything and everything. We, Man, we wanted to talk about the Rockets, and we will get a little bit more into detail with my man, Eddie. Eddie Rowdy. And we're going we're gonna to get a little bit more into NBA as well. Dude, I wish I could. But, man, I put my name like Rowdy. I, that's tight. Huh? I said, Ed, Eddie Rowdy. That shit's tight, dude. Right, right. I love that. Fucking uh, But again, this is the Sports Trap Podcast, and I got to cover one thing, man. And... and I think it's so important uh, for us to hit this topic before we move on. Uh, Kobe Bryant's memorial. Bro, I think that they did it so well. They did it so classy. And I, I got to give a huge shout out to Vanessa Bryant. Absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. She stood up there and she didn't wait to be the last person to speak. She went up there and, and every breath she took, that little moment, a break that she needed to take, I was breathing with her. Mm. I was like, I, I literally caught myself just just mirroring her her breathing tactics. And uh, for her to stand up there and, and say what she said, um, she, she broke it down for Gianna, and then she broke it down for Kobe Bryant. And one of my favorite moments in the entire thing, and I'll let y'all get into it as well, is she was like, Kobe, you got Gianna in heaven. I got us down here. Damn, yeah. I was like, oh, we're man. We're, we're still the best team. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, bro, come on, man. Oh, and it just took me back and, like, you know, LeBron James said something like, he said, there'll never be closure. And there, there, there's a little truth in that. Uh, as, as so much respect that we hold for Kobe Bryant and stuff like that uh, as a player, and now the more we get to know as a man, mm-hmm. uh, I think they did it so so well, so um, so professionally and clean and respectful. Uh, I really want to get you guys' opinion uh, as far as uh, uh, what you guys think about the other speakers and what were what moments did you guys uh, take away from that? Um, I think. Uh What's so special about the whole thing is number one, like you said, Vanessa Bryant talking. She didn't have to. I can only imagine the weight that's on her on her on her shoulders, literally. Um, but watching her made me just think about like her internalizing and doing Kobe right and Gigi right by continuously the Mamba mentality. She was straight Mamba mentality going up there, and that was special. I think that the fact that Michael Jordan would even, you know, Michael Jordan doesn't speak a lot. You know, we know Michael Jordan's always been behind closed doors after after he left basketball. For him to go up there, um, and the worst he said, and the amount of tears he was shedding for Kobe, and just talking about that little brother that's always 
you know, and you know, a nuisance and is annoying, and how you end up growing, growing and loving that person. I can honestly say, John, I, I it made me think about like how much I must have been a nuisance to you. Um, I've always looked at you as like a big brother, and I've always looked to you for advice and and you know, not having much family growing up and you always being the supportive to me. I just thought about like how much I've been a nuisance to you, and I'm just glad that you end up being the way Michael was to Kobe and loving me like that little brother. Cause I still look up to you in so many ways, man. And, um, Shaquille O'Neal did a great job. And I, I just think like when it boils down to it, um, like you said, I think they did a classy job. I think they, I always believe like when you do any type of, of public speaking, you got to make sure that you have the seriousness but, as well as the humorous part of it. There was enough humor there that every time you had a tear, you also smile. It was beautiful. It was perfect. And what better way to pay tribute to somebody that has affected us all and has affected us in so many ways and we didn't even know it until he's passing. And, um, I mean, honestly, it was the hardest thing to watch. But for me, when I hear people say there's never going to be a closure, after watching this, I felt more closure than I've ever before. Hearing these stories, um, hearing these these point of views about Kobe, and it's like every day you find a new story that's happening about Kobe Bryant that just brings a smile to your face, and and that's what doing the right thing every day and going out there and, and working hard and 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 having a sense of humility, because when you do leave this earth, it's the legacy you leave on this earth that's really going to set you apart from everyone else, and it makes you it makes you for I know for me it makes me want to work even that much harder in life so I can live. I can leave that everlasting legacy as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, for sure. That was, yeah, it was great. Um, yeah, it was it was tough to watch, uh, but even though I think uh, you know, based on what you said, what LeBron said, you know, I think there will never be like true full closure uh, for that. But I think this was probably as good as it, you know could have been and, and with that closure that we can get um, and the fact that it was openly available to kind of like watch for everybody in the world uh, to see uh, and I think it was great and I don't know as far as the uh, the amount of viewers it was by assume worldwide that it was a huge uh, event uh, you know and just when you think about like deaths in the world that have affected people like that, you know, like it's a very short list of, of names. Um, you know, think of, uh, you think of Martin Luther King, you think of, uh, Princess Diana, you know, you think of names like that. Of course, all these names that have died too young and Kobe just being like the newest name on the list. So, man, I think it was done super well. And all, all this, all the speakers it makes you kind of wonder like, um, maybe who else they would have wanted or maybe tried to get maybe that didn't want to speak. Um, not that I felt that it was lacking at all. You know, I think, I think for us like basketball fans, uh, uh man, having, having MJ up there. Perfect. Was, oh, was everything, man. And, uh, yeah. And he even said himself, I don't think a, a lot of people, uh, realize like how close they were. I think people still, you know, pit them together. When they think about Kobe and MJ, I thought, you know, it's always going to be Kobe trying to be MJ and this night, which he he was in in a sense, definitely for sure. But it, it didn't mean that, you know, they didn't have a close relationship and he proved that they did by what he spoke. And um, just the fact that, you know, MJ is a pretty private person. He doesn't speak a lot in public. It's not a big public figure. And he came out and did that. Um I don't know. It it really. I, I think it, it spoke a lot with me, you know. And I would say, uh, way more than something like his his MVP speech, or when he when he uh, gave that, uh, that was like heartfelt. But hearing something like this and how he talked about how Kobe impacted him and and uh, what good friends and the stories that they had. I mean, would you ever think that Michael Jordan would actually say that Kobe Bryant but brought the best out of him? Like that was that was powerful. Right, right. Yeah, and I, I'm a big part of. The, I mean, I believe that absolutely. But uh, I mean, I believe, what I'm saying is, I I would have believed that without him saying it. Uh, but to hear him say it for sure was was great. And I think uh, why is I guess maybe shocking to a lot of people is like I said, like he's not 
uh, a public person in that Man. in that way so uh, just just to have him talk i think that was that was real big and you know there's there's been so much uh love and support and tributes from uh, different people and different platforms you know we had the great i uh, want you know Shaq already spoke a good amount on uh, the inside the nba one where they uh shut down all of uh, staples center and had had their whole uh staff uh talk as well as uh some other players and that was a phenomenal one as well so Shaq kept it short and sweet but it was still emotional and he said some great things as well and uh yeah i just think it was it was fitting all around it was perfect the musical performances shout oh, out to houston man. zone beyonce, beyonce for for opening that with uh um it's funny when you hear uh songs in context now when you hear it at certain moments yeah. Cause I've never really thought about those songs in that way. And then now it's just like, man, it'll always, when I hear EXO, when I hear Halo, I'll always connect it now yeah. to, to Kobe and, you know, like Ave Maria. Um, and um, what was it? Uh, Beethoven's uh, Concerto. Yes. Yeah. Alicia Keys did. My goodness. Man, you know, so uh, yeah, the, the music was, was amazing and the and the tributes on that part uh was great I, too I, so I just felt like they were so appropriate like that's yeah kobe's favorite one of favorite, favorite classical songs and ava maria was singing mm -hmm. italian well, italian yeah uh, beautiful and then, man you know you have michael jordan he kept it really personal like something that that you that's what i that's what i when i say like not only did we not find out about him as a more as a basketball player but we also got to find out about him as a human being, as a man, it's like how his inner thoughts worked, how he mm -hmm. ticked, you know, mm -hmm. and how much respect that he had, uh, not just his peers, but people that he looked up to. You know what I mean? Like when you, it's different from to get the respect that you're the, the people you chase as opposed to just people that are your peers that, you know, um, say like, you know, you, you, not to, not to say that you guys aren't anything. But you guys are my contemporaries, right? We're pretty much on the same level. But say I were to meet Stuart Scott one day, one of my idols and stuff like that, and that he a tough one too. were to hold that same respect down <clears throat> to me that right. I held for him just because of what I've tried to do to get to his level, you know? Uh, and that's, that's kind of something as far as an analogy of some source that makes sense to me, and maybe it makes sense to you guys, that how Kobe looked at, uh, or excuse me, how Michael looked at Kobe. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, because you think about it, like, the one thing about Michael Jordan that's so different from everybody else is, is that Michael Jordan, even in his Hall of Fame speech, was still very defiant, very condescending, very cocky. Exactly. And, and, and over the years, mm -hmm. you still haven't been able to feel that sense of humanity aspect of Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. Like, Michael Jordan is always a mystery. I think for a lot of people, and I talked to a lot of people, why Michael Jordan's speech impacted so many people? Because you're like, you saw an honest, opened exactly. sense yeah. of humility yeah. and humbleness. I mean, when he's telling that story about like, when he says, man, he annoyed the hell out of me, like you felt it, but then you saw how much that love, that he grew love for Kobe. Yeah. The fact that Kobe would even like text him at two or three o'clock in the morning about some stupid shit, right? But for <laughs> Kobe, that's how important it was. Like, you know. Like, yeah. like, can you imagine being Michael Jordan and like, you know, your rival was like texting you two or three o'clock in the morning, like, hey, hey, what do you like? How you do this move and that move? And you're just like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, the tenacity and the audacity of yeah. Kobe Bryant to want to be not only like Mike but better than Mike is yeah, is how can you not respect that? Right, man? Right. It brings chills even talking about it because that was just so deep. Shaq, uh, Rob Palenka got talked. Talk to mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. He had the story about the in, uh, trying to get an intern while he was in the why helicopter, he's in a helicopter, man. Uh, which spot, Scott Boris just came out came and said out, that, yep. which was kind of cool that he's going to grant um, one of the, the internship. I can't remember her name, Antebelli. the sixteen year old um, internship mm -hmm. internship, mm -hmm. which was amazing. Um, you got to hear the two uh, women, Diana Taurasi, and yeah. I can't remember her first name. In a way. Uh, she plays for Oregon right now. She's dope. Um, that was one of Kobe's favorite players yeah. uh, to watch, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. uh, She's good. Gino too. Ariema, the head coach of that. To me, I know as a as a father, as a as a father of a daughter, that was one of the more kind of pointed uh, speeches and and uh, that anybody had come up and said because he he delved a little bit into the 
the personal side of Kobe, and, and not only that, um, Gianna too. So, uh, um, I, I I hate to think that I'm missing anybody. Jimmy Jimmy Kimmel uh, kind of pseudo hosted it. Uh, I don't know if he did it on purpose, but he did a phenomenal job. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he did. I mean, he, he, every, everything was done in so much respect and did no commercials, uh, which was was fabulous. I, I unfortunately I was at work, but I was in and out looking, and then even mm-hmm. then afterwards I was watching them on, yeah, on YouTube yeah. and stuff that I maybe have missed. And they whatever. got the whole stream up, multiple sites. It's it's great. You know that's why I said like the. The love as as far as like yeah, like they wanted it to be out and everywhere. You know, like ESPN posted it and like what was it like Washington or New York uh, Tribune posted it and uh all these different sites and made sure that like, hey, this is like something that right, right. we want everybody to see, uh, you know, and uh yeah, a friend of mine actually tried to get tickets to go. Yeah, yeah. Um and she wasn't well, able to lot, she was like, like how did that it was lottery, right? Yeah, it sounded kind of like a shoe release, to be honest, the way that she was describing it. Um, so it was something about, yeah, you sign up to get like a raffle, and then they do kind of like a, a an email system. I think they just wanted to make sure that people weren't bots that Scalping, were trying to oh, like yeah, resell. Yeah. Um, so that was cool. And then she unfortunately got waitlisted, so she couldn't go. But um, Man, they no, had everybody yeah, that's that's what everybody. I wanted to say too. If you if you look at that, um, just any time that they had a camera shot of somebody else just in the crowd. It was just like Jeez. Hall of Famers, all stars, like his peers, um, actors, you know, just uh, you know, politicians, just people from any and every walk of life that has ever that he's ever crossed paths with. And like I said, it's hard to say that if it was anybody else, that that amount of people and that amount of I don't want to even say just talent, but, you know, people that like really like changed the world that would have been yeah, there just you know you know pointed it out yeah you know pointed it out it's like this is probably the greatest assembly of, a- of mm-hmm. nba mm-hmm. athletes all in one oh room. absolutely and shout out to uh uh that you know we had our, our houston's very own james harden and Wes westbrook and you could tell that they, they had a game that night they had a game yeah, that night I was uh, thinking that. they were like 70 like they got in like they because that, 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 that was that was a game, a like, game. they got in that game um 70 minutes prior to the game actually my wow. god and that's why Westbrook didn't end up playing, you know, because he he likes to come in early and get the whole rundown and get mm-hmm. into it. And I think he was also emotional because every time the camera zoomed in on them, they were very emotional. Mm-hmm. They're both from Cali, so Kobe was who they looked up to. A lot of people yeah. fail to realize, like, d- you know, our our generation more so really did grow up as Kobe, yeah. more so watching yeah. Kobe than they did Michael Jordan. Kobe yeah. was everything for everybody, and and uh, you know, like, ah, man, M- it, MJ was that that like mythical figure right <laughs> he was like the god that was like you already knew he was the best you know and uh and i said this before with with john i was like yeah kobe was also great but then he felt like like tangible it was like somebody that could have been if you were ever in that position that could have been your friend too it could have been your brother Absolutely. or your you know, uncle or dad it's like man he feels attainable you know he was enough in the public um you know fresh out of high school and he was 18 and we kind of saw him completely grow up and go through his whole career basically yeah in uh in la whereas at least with me and my generation my age like you know once i really started getting into basketball mj was already on the end of his career like you know into like his last championships and then of course like going to uh the wizards and um it's not the same connection as when you when you see someone like from almost basically beginning beginning to end so it was like most of us i think lived that whole 20 years right with them um so i think i think that was you know a big reason why people connect so much especially of i think of our generation so uh yeah well um i want to take this moment to kind of do like a uh uh toast um a little bit for kobe as a tribute also my man's birthday so uh i got a couple for him to choose from Rock and fuel, of course, you know, and then his unofficial, official, unofficial, official beer, also bueno. Yo, y'all get at me. I'm trying to be sponsored. I mean, I need a job anyway. So <laughs> hit me up. It reminds me of uh, um, the e- EJ's Nito Saturday night when they don't have anybody sponsored. Hey, man, get my boy. Here you get go. Check it out. Check it out. Also bueno. When I'm feeling like a bad bear, 
I grab the can that keeps me going and being the badass, sorry ass son of a bitch that I am. Oh, so bueno. There you go. <laughs> That's off the dome, y'all. I mean, That's I wasn't up. even, That's I wasn't up, even trying, shit, man. Shit. Uh, once again, this is the People's Podcast. Sports Trap Podcast. My name is John Trap. Mr. Qual. Christopher C. Rod Rodriguez. Which one, which one did you I'm want? I'm probably going to have to rock because I'm, I'm really feeling the I rock a few. Right. I haven't had a rock a few in I'll forever. I'll some of your beer. Shout out CJ Salvador, man. He loves his beers. His official hey. beer when he comes to Houston. There you go. Boy loves his rocket. All rock right. Uh, this hmm. time I want to toast. Toast fellas. to uh, Kobe. Uh, new friendships. Rockets uh, tapping that ass. And of course, being 38. When hey. I look like I'm 28, what? <laughs> hey, sure, and real sure. fast, is it we're just so we before we move off the Kobe theme? My wife told me today, she got me this really cool uh, Kobe uh, ESPN uh, memor- memorial book. It was really awesome. She was trying to give me the Kobe ones. If you if you every if you guys get a chance, you haven't watched the Kobe trivia show. Beautiful mm-hmm. show. I've I just appreciate all the feedback we've gotten for that, especially when we start start talking about shoes. And if you get a chance, there's a story about me getting the getting Josh the Kobe ones as his first pair of shoes. She literally tried to go and get me the Kobe ones for my birthday. But guess what? The shoe that originally was like only two hundred bucks, and then even off you know after market was two fifty. Right is now up to nine hundred to a thousand dollars, and I just want to say shout out to um to all you scumbags out there that are trying to make money off of somebody's death. I, I get that everything's a hustle, but sometimes you just don't hustle like like life, and I right, think that's right. just pretty shitty. So you know, f you guys, and most importantly, you ruin it for me to get the Kobe ones, which is a shoe that I need in my my stable. So. Yeah, just want to say. I heard eBay even took out some of the. Yeah, they have. They they, because it was just a lot of shops are are like combating. Shout out to eBay. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's that's pretty big. Like you don't think of a corporate conglomerate to like put fucking feeling behind Mm -hmm. you know the Mm -hmm. actual bottom line or at least in front you know. Well, with that being said. Uh, Travis Scott is, is definitely alive and he's lit as hell, but I am selling my bobblehead for Travis Scott for two hundred dollars. Just FYI, <laughs> <laughs> that's hustle right there. You wanna? There was a. Oh, just real quick, right before. Yeah. Uh, there was a. There was an an artist or a rapper. I forget who. I don't know if you heard about this. Who who came out and publicly said that when he dies, he doesn't want to have any of his music released after that 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 hasn't been released already. Hell yeah, man. Um, just because, you know, just, just on the whole, like, posthumous thing, like, that's the thing that happens a lot in music, right? I mean, just think about, Culture like, vultures, bro. After, after Tupac or after any of these artists. Is it somebody we know? Uh, yeah, I, f- I forget who it is. I'll, I'll look it up in a bit. But, uh, um, but yeah, so I've never heard anyone actually come out and say that. And that maybe I think that a big reason of that is, is you know, just uh, this whole, like, thing with Kobe. I know it's a whole different field, but... Uh, yeah, I kind of respect that. It's like for real, like just like hey, because you were saying like oh, if you didn't want to uh, release it, or if I didn't want to release it, then I don't want the you know the world's not meant to hear it after absolutely. I'm dead. And then of course the, the whole side of the whole like people are going to be profiting uh, from it, and and unfortunately, I mean, I feel a lot of times like if it's like the family doing it, like that's one thing. It's hard to like I guess fight against that because if it's for them, then that's one thing. But then you know like. Was with the shoes, his family ain't getting any of that, you know? Nike's not even really getting any of that. They're not selling new exactly. Nike shoes. You know, it's all these resellers. And so that's, I, I would draw the line uh, I heard, there. I heard Nike even pulled a lot of their stuff too. Yeah, so no. That way, they, mm-hmm. that way it, it wasn't viewed as profiting mm-hmm. off of his. I think his March 30th, past. they're going to finally release a Kobe shoe. It's the one that Anthony Davis has been rocking. If you got a chance to look at our story. What, the, the, the big game one? Yeah. Or the yeah. big stage? Yeah. They, so that was I, supposed to be released on the uh, the 7th. Right. And I think they held it off. A lot of a lot of them wore that for the uh, for the All Star game, yeah. yeah. And I was like, so if you get your hands on so that, bad. I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna oh, try to get my hands on it. I'm ready to fight price, anybody bro. and everybody. I gotta get that. I gotta get that Pro Tro Kobe, man. Dope. Yeah. One of my favorite Kobe's. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, this is a Sports Chat Podcast. But I want to introduce my boy, Mr. Eddie Rowdy. As we go back into a little uh, bit of rock and shop sh- talk, baby. Yeah, Eddie Rowdy. What, first of all, that's a dope ass name. Second of all, I just feel like if I was part of the the Red Rowdies and I had a name, it'd be like Chris Piss. I just it just doesn't sound cool, man. <laughs> what? You know what I mean? Yeah, because you got it rhymes. You know what I mean? No, but I, I like Eddie Rowdy. That's what I'm saying. Shit's man, you gangster. Know what? We we need to get a shirt with the with like the old school uh, Roddy Rod Piper type. 
like logo on on. But like a, and like ketchup and in 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 mustard. Ketchup though. and mustard. Hey, fan favorite man. I've been getting it's, so much yeah. stuff about. Hey, who's that boy? Who's that boy, Eddie? <laughs> he was bomb. He was bomb. Look at his fuck, but hey, you know. <laughs> it is what it is, man. Yeah. Yo, hey, man. I mean, if you're gonna cheer for the Rockets, why not be high? I mean, that's what Rockets do. Like they blast up in in in, in outer space, right? Go to the moon. It's man. lit. Yeah, we, we Hey, it's all natural high here, man. We don't we don't do that stuff. Right, natural. But we from the city of A, so we represent, right? All right, oh, man. Dang, dang. Uh, we were just talking a little bit about Kobe, as you know. Yeah. Um, did you get to see the tribute at all? Uh, I did. I was at work, and uh, what'd you think about it? Man, it's just I couldn't really see it because I was working, but I had kind of had my phone up to where you could hear it, to where I can like, glance up and look at it. Right, right. And then I, had, you know, I had headphones in, yeah, so yeah. I was listening to it. Uh, some some powerful stuff, man. That uh. You know Vanessa going up there. That was you know, and that's when I started watching it right before she went up. So I miss you know, I miss the queen. But you know, I saw Vanessa and and for her to go up there, like you said, off the bat, just first, I'm gonna get you know, I'm gonna go up there, you know, and and the way she described everything, man, it just you know, it, it hits, especially if you're a parent. You know, I'm not a parent, and that hit me. You know, and then. I can already imagine you know, what you know what parents feel like, and yeah. for them to go through something like that, you know, though, you know, and then and then MJ going up there, you know, that was even, and you can tell that was like a big surprise because the crowd even, yeah, they he erupted. Had, they were like, yeah. man, they were, man, MJ, MJ is about to come up here and talk, you know what I'm saying, like, but you know, and all of them too, you know, Shaq, his was you know short to the point. They knew, you know. Everybody knows their history, what they did. The rings say it all, you know. So, um, but overall, man, it was it was really good. It was it was. They, they, they now, um, yeah, man, that 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 all around a plus. Uh, I think they did it right. Now, last week, Chris was wasn't here with us, but you and your boy Amir came through. Uh, Great show, by the severe, way. Severe, rowdy. Uh, but Chris had a couple things he, he wanted to to pick your brain about. Right. Um, I don't know exactly, but I'll let you take the floor, Chris. First of all, <laughs> man, I just want to say the fact that the Red Rowdies are even here on the, the Sports Shot Podcast <laughs> is fucking amazing. <laughs> uh, I think appreciate that appreciate I think it. that one thing when we when John and I first started this podcast. There was a shitload of rocket talk. Matter of fact, everyone's like, "Do you guys ever talk about anything other but the Rockets?" And I'm like, "No," because the Rockets seem like the only team that uh, <laughs> is relative to the way we feel about the city of Houston. And it's almost as if they're taking on that mantra about yeah. uh, not being appreciated. Right? And I know that 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 I, that, hate that so much. <laughs> I think it's just I think it's so cool that that um that you know I know I don't know if people know the history about like how the, the Red Rowdies came for him and Jeff Van Gundy mm-hmm. had a lot to do with that and mm-hmm. he still loves the the Red Rowdies. He was I'm, there uh, today. Dude, yeah. he that, that, was, that, that was fucking that was Van right Gundy, there. man. Very I cool. still one of my favorite coaches of all time. Mike, what I wanted to bring to the table and what I want to ask is mm-hmm. is like I'm tired of watching the Rockets who for the most part other than the Astros have been the closest thing to being competitive every year for such a long time. Yes. And have given us so many memories, even if that means uh, missing like 23 threes um, in a game and losing to go to say worse. But point being, we'll believe that alone. Yeah. But I'm getting, I'm so tired of watching the Rockets games and we continuously allow these corporations mm-hmm. to buy all these really badass seats, right? And then not even fucking sit there while the ugly, all the real fans are up in the nosebleed yeah, city. Yeah. And and I, they, they gave you guys a good place, right, to sit. Yeah, I love yeah, it. You yeah, show yeah. me the screen. Yeah, I like it. But I think that they need to, like, let the Red Rowdy sit right there at, at, at court side. Court, man, that would be dope. First of all, shout out, Bo Weiser, Bo Light. Um, cheers. <laughs> but that would be dope. But that would also kind of affect the game just because of the fact that we have drums. Uh-huh. So the closer we are to the court, the more it can, you know, distract, obviously, you know, the opposing team. But, um, you know, we do stuff on offense, too. 
Well, so. my question to you is that, that I hear what, why that that would be necessary, mm -hmm. but they don't do the same thing in Utah. I mean, they actually let their fans even come to the games, and they're horrible. They're distracting, and they're yeah. just they're just racist, horrible people. Yeah. Well, I rather hear drums than racist people yeah. shouting out horrible shit. And see, that's the thing. As much as I love drums and stuff, but for us to have drums to hype the people up is just something that it's just like it just tells you something about our fans. You know, in Utah, they don't need drums. They they get hyped up here. It's just like man, like. You know the 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 game will be dead sometimes, and it's like what I hear in in in, a, in with with opposing teams is, um, you know, their team is down ten points, fifteen points, and they're cheering like even like as as the score gets worse for them, they're cheering louder and louder to let them know, hey, you know, here at Toyota Center, it's it's dead. You know one thing. One thing I think in American sports is missing. I, I, I'm a big Liverpool fan. I'm a big soccer fan, right? And Eddie can tell you. He sees me up there, and it's something like I don't hardly ever talk about, right? Soccer. Yeah. But um, one thing that some soccer teams do, especially when it's a hard fought game, is teams stay out on the court or on the field. Uh, in that case, and just like say thank you to the fans, especially like. Like if there's a section like the Red Rowdies, yeah, and y'all y'all put your heart and soul into each and every game, mm -hmm. uh, man, that's the first people they salute. They come out after a hard fought game, after a win, even after losses. Like mm -hmm. if you can gain the respect out of your fans, even after a hard fought loss, because you gave it your all, mm -hmm. like they'll sit out there and they'll say, you know, uh, you know, you know, they'll bow or wave or whatever and that, that's one thing that i think that if if uh all around like if maybe throughout american sports if they did more of that i think we could create like fortresses at home yeah. like you know really more than just like bandwagon fans like they only show up because we're good or something like that you know that i think that you could build a good fan base but you know the problem also lies within what chris was saying that corporate buy so many of these yes. tickets and then they just give them out mm -hmm. as a tax write-off but some people don't even show up they don't even show up. Real. show up and and that's one thing that i that 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 me and, and and a couple of the other rowdies mentioned is like we were standing in line i stood in line two hours for that bobblehead all right Two hours. He was in line too. Well, I was there until later on. It was crazy how we met. It was. Hilarious. We're like every. We kept passing each other. <laughs> yeah, we're like, yo, we what's up? I'll right, see you in the yeah, next yeah. round. We'll keep carrying yeah, yeah, the conversation yeah, yeah. going, man. At first, like, it was like, why is this dude looking at me? But and then y'all keep passing. Like, yeah. No, hold on. He, I know him. I was hold like, hey, he, podcast, right? he goes, <laughs> he goes, hey, you in the sports trap podcast? And I was like, yeah. And I was just looking at him, and then he goes, like, motherfucker, you know who I am? What's up, bro? And I was like. Oh shit! What's up, man? My boy T-Rex. What's up, man? Man. Like, So y'all met like before we were celebrities met in or some shit, life, dog. Like, like, that's, yeah. that's awesome, yeah, man. That's like yeah, in, yeah. in line for a Travis Scott bobblehead. But we were talking to each other, and we were like, "I guarantee you, half of these motherfuckers in line are gonna get this bobblehead. We're gonna walk Jet. in, get this bobblehead, and walk right the fuck back out and leave." Really? And, and, and I, I just feel like, like, and this is what. I and that's one thing I want to bring to the table because I I think that like I think there is more Rockets fans in general than than is than is perceived on national televised games. Yes. Even in just I I think what it is is that I don't think that the Rockets PR or the marketing team has really really uh, like I don't think they have a full understanding of who the Rockets fans are. Yes. It's not your corporate people. Let me tell you something. Listen, if those seats were available, people like me, people like you, people. like... <laughs> People like John Call, we Man. would buy those seats. But unfortunately, we can't buy those seats because they've already been bought up. And my whole thing is like, there has to be something where, and you tell me how you feel about this, where if corporations buy those seats, if they're not going to sit there, they have to give notification at least three to four hours prior to the game so they can sell those seats or give those seats to the people who really give a fuck about the Houston exactly. Rockets. Like, I could care less if you're trying to impress um, some um, some uh, Saudi rep and you just want to like, oh, I got seats, and then you're not even sitting in the games. You're yeah. over there drinking that high, expensive-ass yeah. beer. And not just that. They have those really good seats, and then they're not there. They're at the bar. Like, mm -hmm. like watching it on a on a TV and it's like could done this shit at home. Yeah. I sit on my couch. I think I think like, eventually it needs there. to be to the point where, you know, we never do this, right? When we go to Astros games, Rockets games, uh well, Texans don't have to worry about this, but 
you know, whenever it's the second quarter, I mean, excuse me, the second half or like towards the last three innings of the game and these, these seats aren't filled up, you know, I just walk by the down. usher Let's and I act like I've been there the whole game. And I sit down in the low. Yo, bowl. some of those old ushers be tripping though. Yo, I try. I know, to I know. But where that's what I'm saying. Say like, that, like, oh, wow. Hey, where you? Where, where, uh, you uh, ticket. Yeah. You ticket. Oh. And I'm just like, bro, it's, like, it's always like, a minorities listen, too. I'm gonna put that on record. These seats have been em- these seats have been empty the whole game. Mm-hmm. Let me let me go down there, act like a real fan that I am, and let's hype this whole crowd up. Hype our team up. Let's get behind it. Not. I mean, don't get me wrong. Red bodies are there for 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 a purpose, and, and they do a great like job. But great job. They do an amazing job. But yeah, like like, do you know? Imagine how much more of a, a boisterous crowd we can get if that lower bowl gets filled up and have the the the, the red riders leading the way. Not really, Jeez. just that, just the reputation. Also, like exactly. we're known as one of the worst fan bases. One in, of the worst in, in in the NBA. So, and and a lot of that says. Is, is is you can tell by people not sitting in those seats and on TV that's all you can that's see. All yeah. you can see. Those I was even watching sucks. it today and I was like, all you can see is those lower seats. We we are a proud city. We we actually have very good fans. Don't get yeah. me wrong, but the, they it's all a, sit well, fucking up there, right? You know, right? And it, and and one fourteen. Uh, it's crazy. <laughs> if you look up, if you know, unfortunately you can't see it on the camera, but if you were to look up, it's more full up there yeah. than it is down. Full as hell. I sat up there the other day. Like, I was thinking to myself, wow. Like you can go to a game and be like, why the fuck can't it be like this every game? And it's like, it is. It's just those lower seats are just never full. And there is just people that really just don't care. It's just people that just get them for free from, you know, corporations and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, you know, I got these tickets, but I don't feel like going. I'm tired from work. Yeah. What What if they, I know that you guys have this section. Yes. For for the red rowdies, but what if what if we had two more sections of red rowdies? Ooh, uh, you know we kind of do something like that, but I mean it's not really a big group. It's just we'll have we're starting to have a couple of rowdies go in our section, but yeah. like kind of go to tor- like towards the court a little bit lower, and they'll start telling people, you know, hey. Uh, when we shoot free throws, like we said last time, we throw our H's up. So we will have someone on there. You'll hear him H's up. You know, we're throwing H's up. And you see people in the lower bowl getting involved as well. You know, uh, we're on defense. He's, ch- you know, they're chanting defense to get the crowd going. And, and, you know, they get hyped up and stuff, you know. And we try to throw it in there, you know. That's why it's, you know, that's why we're 50 deep in one section to where we can get it around the whole arena. But I wouldn't mind that idea of getting, you know, a couple different people. That's what I'm saying, a couple sections. of different groups. Because yeah. I was thinking to myself, as I was watching uh, probably the worst, sorry, if you if you are a cheerleader for the for the Rockets and you're watching this, <laughs> I apologize. But this has to be some of the worst cheerleaders <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. What if you took the money that you're spending on cheerleaders, got rid of that, and just yeah. added more red rowdies? I feel yeah. like that would bring like more team spirit. And there, yeah, and, you know and, what I mean? And, you know, get you know get this crowd going because we can be here and have this whole area right here going, but like you know, over there they're just like, oh look, you know, yeah, something's going on over there. You because know, Todd like, from Exxon needs to know it's okay to throw up the H. <laughs> You know what I mean? He does. Our, our, our Carl, he needs to know that 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 mobile X on. It's okay to throw up the H and get rowdy and sit your ass in the seat and cheer for the team that you came to watch because mm-hmm. that's what Houston's about. Yeah, exactly. I don't know, but I do. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, saying, good, man, good, 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 uh, good discussion, man. I I I feel like if you were to watch the product on the well. If you were to watch the stands, it's not a representation of the actual city. Again, man, I think we actually have better fans than what is portrayed. Absolutely. Uh, and we have more loyal fans. Uh, like the, just the, the the fact that we have red rowdies is something that's kind of like uh, unique to our our own team and our own city. It shows how how loyal and how uh, genuine our fans are and how actual a uh, fan base we have. You know, because being a red rowdy from what. Um, Amir was telling me it, you have to try out for it. You have to actually show. Oh, you got audition. You got to show you, that you can. You, you can do audition. this. So what? So uh, you know, I, you know, I heard the rest of the show uh, when we left, and you guys were asking on what kind of what the audition was and stuff like what what really you have to do to get you know into the rowdies. Um, there is a tryout. Just pretty much, you know, 
dress up, get all geared up in yeah. your Rockets gear, uh, get a chant or whatever, you know, like, you know, like, like he said, everybody has to try out every year. Whether you've been there, you know, it's your first year, it's your, you know, 13th year, you still have to try out. Is there limitations of what you can wear or what you can be? No. No, there's not. As as so if I own. wanted to come as a a red condom, dress as a red <laughs> condom, <laughs> because I'm fucking shit up as a red rowdy fan. We actually had a couple people come in banana suits. Nice. Yeah. And, and, and they, so they you were at the game out, tonight, like, though, right? Yeah. So, uh... The crowd was, uh, you know, it was, as always, not everybody shows up early. So around the middle of the first quarter, that's when it starts looking. But, you know, like, the actual game itself, we uh, almost won by, like, 40 man, points. We got 140 with no center. Um, <laughs> Shout out know, small ball. Yeah, small ball, baby. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Um, man, it's just everything, like I said, in, in the last podcast, for whatever reason, we click after the All-Star break. And we entered the All-Star break on a good note, and by the looks of it, we're doing pretty fucking good right now. I like, you, the, I like the fact that, that you know, we're, Harden's getting his. Yes. Westbrook is, of course, getting his. Yes. The, 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 the actual flow of the game looks amazing it's yes. so open it's uh they, they the teams don't know what to do they, they either collapse or they don't move from their man and if they don't move from the man harden and westbrook are so good at getting to the bucket that or that, looking for the open you know looking for the open man i'm telling you, you know, westbrook like, what this is westbrook's game like and, and, and it's something finest. that he's he hasn't had before hey can you, you know? can you you and chris both can speak on this but when is the last time you see the Rockets so dedicated to defense? Like it's it's uh, man, 2017, I, 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 2017, 2017, mm -hmm. when well, we almost I, beat the I, stupid ass Warriors. You know, it, I know. <clears throat> Shout I know out it Draymond looks Green, like one on one, baby. What's up, dog? But look, check this out. Check this out. <laughs> love, that. Down, love that. Love that. Love that. That that was I, a classic I, moment. I know it looks like it's kind of weird because they're averaging something like 110 points. Yeah. Uh, the opponents, mm -hmm. but when we're scoring 140, 120, 120, you know, points in the game, so up and down, it may not. With look no like center, did I say we're, that? We're, right we're like sorry. harping on defense. No, I say it one more time. Collapsing. Really everybody's giving the full effort. Um, I mean, I. I, I Save a couple times that James Harden's guarding the center, kind of lets yeah. Valentunas, you know, put a couple down on him. But I mean, I get that, you know, like. Hey, but I mean, hey, he's, he's out there. to fight another day. Hey, he should have make sure that whatever they're paying him seems hey. like it's worth it. You know what I mean? I, mean, you gotta give a couple hey, I don't know about y'all, but he, he's been playing some defense this year. Hell, that, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Like, he, for all this talk that Giannis and I know Chris has a couple opinions on Giannis. All this talk about Giannis the dogs out, uh, baby. looking for James Harden to whoever James Harden was holding, we give him the ball. But again, they lost, right? Um, um, you know, James Harden's holding his own, man. Like I, I honestly think that you know we're a top two team, top two, hey. and I know we're in fourth or fifth, and I can't. Let me see specifically. Hold on. So hey. specifically. We're in, uh, we're in four, but you know, honestly, by the end of the end of the series or end of the season, I can see them easily going to two. Mind you, they play the Clippers within the next week, oh. so we can hey, we can listen, be two by the end of the it's week. Another W. I, I think people don't realize that for the last year, I told you that uh, James Harden really struggled trusting Chris Paul because Chris Chris Paul was was still having injury issues and. After he came back from, from the injury from 2007, 2018, Chris Paul was no longer the Chris Paul that could get past even the center. And it almost felt like James Harden could no longer trust the team at whole. This new surgeons of the Rockets, you are seeing a trusting James Harden. Mm -hmm. Somebody the other day says, is this becoming West? It's the haters, you know, the national media. Is this becoming Westbrook's team? No, 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 no. It's still Harden's team. But Harden... Is starting to trust his teammates. He is starting to trust that if he passes to 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 Macklemore, he's going to be able to hit 
that three pointer, sixty seven percent, I believe. Um, that's another thing. Say that boy's name man, again, man. man. Benny Mac with the sauce. Woo! Woo! Man. I put him out. That's cat on that's side. something. And, about and look, man, check this out, man. Let me tell you something. This, Break it down. This, for all the haters out there, this is the year Harden will show up in the playoffs. Oh! And I'll tell you what. Oh! He will show up because think about it. There's now that you get rid of Capella, and that's another thing I want to get into. Like, it's not just him making the plays. It's for sure. not you know. It's not just him making the plays. He doesn't have to. You know, do this and that. Like, look, look at when our bench comes in. Look at Austin Rivers. Look how he's been playing. Ooh. Look how he did today. Ooh. Austin Rivers. He was damn near my perfect. new favorite I Rocket. You were already my favorite Rocket, man. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I, I appreciated like, today? We every aspect of the game, whether it's Westbrook yes. being out, James Harden came yes. through. James Harden was out. Westbrook came through. When both of them were out, we had. Awesome Rivers. You 50 had, points, Gordon. <laughs> EG. You had, uh, uh, um, oh boy, Macklemore. Yeah, uh, Coco, obviously. Yeah. Jeff Green, man. I cannot. Hey, Jeff Green I, has I, been a I, solid. I need to apologize to Jeff Green because, honestly, one, I thought that you were a different person. I thought I was actually, when when Jeff Green's uh, name came to my head, I was actually thinking about Rodney Hood. Uh, and I was like, man, I just. But not only did Jeff Green sign a 10-day contract, get on the team, show out, right? He actually decided to stay for the team for the rest of the season. What's up, yeah. man? What's up? They show Green Green. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know what? And, 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 I, hope, and I hope for, for Dan Tony's sake, Jeff Green isn't another uh, Manimal, right? Because Manimal played good during the season, but... As soon as the playoffs came around, that's because he, he couldn't switch defense, bench. though, John. He, huh? could, he couldn't switch defense. Green can play defense, and he has exactly. long arms. Exactly. I, I I love what Green Green is so awkward. It's it's weird, but it, it works. You Beasting know, like, right now. <laughs> Draining threes, man. He's trying to poster people, man. He's all I feel like Jeff Green sick. dunks. Woo! Jeff Green dunks weird. Like it's first his arm stretches, then he jumps. Yeah, you you were saying so that. it's kind of. <laughs> He's like he's like stretch Armstrong and then he jumps. Yep. It is as opposed to jumping first and then coming down hard. As long as he makes but, him, we'll hey, be that's right. exactly. Hey, even DC, even DC, as uh, you know, we picked him up and he's even starting to play, getting the rotation. Uh, even though when DC runs, it looks like it hurts. Uh, <laughs> uh, he looks so awkward. Yeah, uh, Demarco. But I, 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 at the end of the day, man, he also brings that length as far as another wing defender. That and you saw that tonight. I saw he had a big old block. Oh, yeah. It's like his man went right by him, yeah. but he was there enough because he knew like you can go right by me. But yeah. these these long arms about to mm-hmm. stuff your shit like Oreo that's cookies, the thing, man. And they're all they're all aggressive in the paint with respect. Hey, to get how true rebounds. is this statement? Like how true is this statement? They have to beat us. Conform to us as opposed to us beating them. Yes, you get what I'm saying. So de- it's definitely a true statement. It's definitely a true statement. They have to keep up with us. We're just too fast. We're like too you, fast of a team. Because right? like if I feel like every everybody's game plan as is can't compete with us. Yeah. So they would have to change their game up yeah. somehow, to adjust to us somehow for in order for them to actually have a chance against and us. And you know why? That's because they don't know who's gonna be making the play. Think plays. about that. Think how powerful that they, that 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 is. That you have to change your game completely. And can you do it over seven games versus us as opposed to us having to change your, our game to theirs? I think the only team, I think there's two teams that I think that, that, that could compete with us in the West. Of course, I think it's the Lakers and the, yeah. and the, and the Clippers. We have to give those, those props to those teams. Yeah. Interesting today, they're, they're going to be putting Conley on the bench because he's been struggling and the, and the, uh, and the starters in Utah, which is interesting to me. I heard they switched it to English. Wow, I, yeah. I, I, de- I just think that there, there might need to be a coaching change in Utah because they have the talent. I just don't think they understand who they are. They don't have an identity. Awesome. I think this year is the first year since 2017 that it feels like the Rockets have a true identity. They have yes. embraced a small ball. Um, but here's the thing. I feel like there's foreshadowing goes because we talked about Giannis. Um, he has a complete disrespect and dislike not only for James Harden but for the Houston Rockets. And I think this man spends too much time um, watching 2014 um, fan 
a biased fan videos of James Harden that he's failed to realize how good James Harden is, which is fine to me because there's been nothing sweeter and nothing more beautiful, and I'm sure you won't contest this, than the Rockets going to the finals to play the bitch-ass fucks, I mean the Bucks. Um, because no, you said it right the first time. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Sure. Some, you know, if, if you watch the show, you know sometimes I actually just destroy names ap- accidentally. So why I did say it right, the fucks. Anyways, um, because I think this man is feeling himself too much for somebody who lowers his shoulder. Yes. Um, who to me is one dimensional when it comes to offensively. Yes, everyone's like, well, he can shoot the three every once in a while. He makes that three. I think that it was proven that um, Giannis can be stopped in the playoffs, especially if everyone just crowds the paint. Because I believe that James Harden and Ben Blackamore can consistently hit the yes. three before I can think yes. Giannis can hit the yes. three. Yes. So there would be nothing sweeter on earth. Matter of fact, if there's my wish when I blew up that candle was for the Houston Rockets to go to the finals, to play Giannis and the fucks, because there is nothing else sweeter for me in my life and all the adversity that I've had to endure in the last couple of months than to see my Rockets beat the shit so out of you those think, Okay, so we're, we're just to back up real quick. I agree. You basically think that the West is, the excuse me, the East is done. Absolutely. So it's just the Bucks and nobody else. Absolutely. Raptors defending? No. No? No. No? Okay. They made them. They, um, they, they just beat Jason them, Tatum they? is Jason, T- is, that, is that right? Yeah, Jason right. Tatum. I'm, awesome. I'm thinking. I'm, I was watching the uh, Channing Tatum movie, so I'm getting my nights. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> oh, you're oh, Magic man. Mike. Shut the hell up. We already know he's, he's watching. He's that. Magic, watching Magic so Mike anyways, too. <laughs> anyways, Magic Mike too. Uh, boy, coming on fire, man. Like he's having a, a a James Harden type. You know, the best team is the Bucks. Three Hands run stretch. Yeah, yeah. The Seventy Sixers looks like Embed's hurt again. Um, Embiid, I say Embed. But uh, I MB, I, everybody hates that guy. And then, of course, Ben Simmons is hurt. That, dude, that guy is is just narcissistic for no reason. It's just like, dude, they. I think still, he's, doesn't he's, he's still he's, talk he's, about his rookie of the year. Yeah, he does. He's in, in a different year. era. Like he's in a man in, in not in his time. But okay, so so we got the Bucks in the East, right? They're they're the de facto Eastern Conference champion. Who is the biggest threat to the Rockets? I think if the Lakers. Choose one. The Lakers. Choose one. Lakers. I do believe it's the Lakers. Really? Especially if they are stay you, healthy. Are, are you seriously scared of the Lakers? Um, I'm the reason why I'm scared of the Lakers is because a team that's motivated to win a championship for the name of Kobe is a team that that I'm I'm definitely that that's passion. That's something right, that right. we can't match. You know what I mean in that sense. I think the biggest the biggest fear of the Lakers is the fact that can Anthony Davis and LeBron James both collectively stay healthy all season long. Mm-hmm. That's a different story. And obviously, the Lakers are all in because they're not sitting their players because they know that if they sit players and they lose two or three games, oh, shit, now we're worrying about... Nobody wants nobody wants to be anything less than one through four because after that, you, know, you really risk getting knocked out the first round. I don't think we're, we're close enough anymore because I think there's like 20... I want to say like 25 games, 23 to 24, five games I think it's left. 23 games left. Right. So... And, and and we'd have to make up. I want to say like eight eight games. Seven games. We're seven. Seven games out. Seven. Yeah. Um. So tomorrow, James LeBron James is actually gonna sit out. There's a funny meme out there that <laughs> LeBron James. Did you see his Lamar dunk yesterday? I did. Okay. Well, Steroids. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, uh, you heard it here, folks. Um, you heard it here first. Uh, anyway, so he's Duncan, right? Yeah. And HGH. Joe Hart, I think his name is Hart. Um, he, he's, I saw that. He got a face <laughs> full of nuts. Bro, and guess what? It was even funnier about that. <laughs> Fucking LeBron James is sitting out for a, a sore going tomorrow night. Oh, oh, after, like, first of all, first of all, you're giving LeBron face. James. <laughs> you, wait, wait, wait. You're giving LeBron James too much credit. First of all, great dunk. Great, but the man who's on on steroids and HGH, trust me, his nuts are not that big. The guy didn't get hurt from any. He didn't get no nuts in his face. It was basically like just just flat. When you do that much, sti- <laughs> when you do that, hey, when, when you do that much steroids, your, your nuts guys. your nuts shrink. Horse Chat Podcast just said that LeBron James. Has- <laughs> I didn't say it, but you know what I'm thinking. <laughs> Listen, listen, can I say something? What else is just flat? Listen, listen, hey, hey, 
Some people say mangina. It is what it is. <laughs> I'm going to say this. And the reason I'm saying this is because I was on board with LeBron James again. I became a fan again after everything with Kobe. And then this motherfucker had to ruin it again by even putting his two cents with nobody else about how he felt about the Houston Astros. First of all, you're uh, a Yankees fan. You, you hype beast, bias. Yes. Mangina, you, you, oh, you didn't need to say anything. You just shut your pie hole. Like, right. seriously, just be quiet. Uh, <laughs> this is the Sports Chat Podcast. Man, Eddie, Shout thank you so LeBron much, James man. You, hey, we're going to have you on so much more. I, I really appreciate you coming through. Always I'm glad I could representing be here too, man. you, to you man. you already know. Eddie Rowdy, the, the Rowdies, man, Red Rowdies. Anytime y'all want to come through, Eddie, man, seriously. Bring your boys. Bring whoever you want. Hey, Let me know. know. And uh, hey, they can you bring all fifty of them? Let's just have like the, all the fifty rounds wow. behind. behind that us. would be my. Hey, we'll do the show. podcast from the game. Oh, wow. you know what? What you know what? If 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 there's any any dream of Ooh. mine, one day, wow, we could put together like a, a a bar or or somewhere for all the Red Riders to be able to come through every day, every night, every game, yeah. and just yeah. hang out and uh and. Shit, man, we could do this podcast every day. We could do it. I'm down. Like I tell you, bro, I'm just like, hey, man, when you going to do it, man? I'm down. Let me know. All right, man. Appreciate you. <laughs> Appreciate much you love. Always. 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 See Thank you so much, man. Mr. Claw. Thank you, sir. Let's go Rockets, baby. Rockets. Out there, man. That small ball. I'm telling you. Small ball in that ass. Yo. Small ball in that ass. We're not talking about LeBron James small balls. We're talking about the small ball Rockets. <laughs> Get this shit straight. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, man. Hey, y'all wanted me back. Solve, Yo, man. you that, guys that's... wanted me back. Let me take off let me take off my jacket. It's a little hot drinking this rocket fuel, man. Shit. I drink beer in the wall, guys. Real quick, real quick, uh, this is the Sports Chat Podcast. My name is Sean Trapp. Mr. Quad back with us in the house. Joining us once again, Christopher C. Rod Rodriguez. I'm trying to get undressed over here. Shit, man, it's bro. my birthday, brother. <laughs> uh you guys excited for the Astros uh uh <sighs> spring training and Getting back to it. Eddie, come back. No, 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 no. <laughs> Shit. Listen, man. Somebody told me today, we were talking about that off air, but somebody was like, man, don't you feel sorry for the Astros? They got to get booed. No, I don't. They deserve to get booed. Yeah, but Embrace what do you think it. about the Astros taking up their signs? Like people coming out and saying like. I think it's a weak move. You think Personally, so? it's a weak move. Listen, listen. I told you, in order for this to, to work itself out, Astros have to embrace being a villain. The greatest heels, and all time, shout out to wrestling, uh, the greatest heels of all time embrace the booze and the hate. It, and I've always felt this way. Before anyone can truly cheer for you, they have to boo you first. So, but like, do you think that, that George Springer swinging away, trying to mash the first pitch he saw all spring training uh, because he was getting booed, do you think that that was embracing the heel, or do you think that was him still fighting? No, that was the, him trying to prove that he didn't need no swinging and banging to hit that shot. I mean, to hit that to hit that ball, and he looked like I'm sure everybody in the stadium were like, "See, no trash cans. Look what happened, Springer." Oh, uh, but hey, hey, Springer didn't hit it, but you know who did? Besides Miles Straw, who I brought up earlier, Bregman got his first home run. Of course he did. Hey man, MVP this year. Um, we'll see if he embraces the hate. That, listen, in order for the Astros to be successful this year, they have to embrace the villain role. I am, I envision the Astros going all black with like the orange, orange like Astro Ooh, logo. Be so tight. What? Black to black. Bro, Chris, they need to hire you tomorrow. Yo, I'm just saying. <laughs> that is the sickest. That would automatically be. Your hat is already just a, 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 a um, maybe like a foreshadowing of what the Astros should do. Instead of it being, of course, ketchup and mustard, be rainbow Astros colors with a black Just telling you, instead man. instead of the white. It oh my god! Black on black, everything. Listen, if you're if you're gonna be if we're Dude, gonna I be hope, the bad guy, let's be at the least bad. a hat. It, a it, hat. it has to happen, and you know, here's the thing, man. You know, like I, I've said this from the jump, and if you follow the show, and by the way, all of our fans that continue to watch the show, thank you so much. Um, but this has been a heartbreaking breaking thing for me because of Astros fans and what the Astros mean to me. Um, at the same time, as much as I've been so disappointed with the Houston Astros and then them doing what they did, 
I've been that much more disappointed with the national media and and mm. how just how people who mm. had had no, you have players who didn't even have a chance to make the fucking playoffs mm. wanting to mm. open up their mouth and and in and, and I just think that at the end of the day that baseball came to the Astros by saying hey let's uh let's go ahead and punish the Astros and make a make a make them escape go so we can kind of just get rid of this all this this cheating that's been going on with all the teams for so for such a long time and uh it's not working that out now because now teams are using anything and everything and saying some outlandish things about hurting our Astro players um you got People saying if your Astros fans don't even go on the road with them because you're endangered. I mean, I could almost bet that the Houston Astros are probably gonna have the most security since ever. Not only that, but because the national media is 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 portraying the Astros as such horrible human beings on earth, they're almost as bad as a coronavirus at this point. <laughs> um, that literally, that literally, like th- th- that. Uh, you alright, man? <coughs> God damn, already. Well, he's got it. You already got, got it. He's you already got, 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 he's got John, you already got the Astro Vice. You got the, the Astro Vice. Listen, it, it, it's to the point where where that someone like um, Reddick is 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 has people saying, "I hope your kids die of cancer." This that's this crazy. is this is horrible, and I, I'm gonna tell you but right that's now. That's the time we live in. Though, it man. is, but that's what I'm saying. There's fa- there's fans like us, and then there's fanatics or like the call retards. But I, I think go beyond just hiding behind the keyboard. Well, like you would never you, say that shit to. No, his no, face. no. That's just it. There are people out there, especially in New York, that are gonna go above and beyond to prove a point. Right, right. And that's the scary part about all this. And I feel like at the end of the day, I blame not only Major League Baseball, but also blame the player union or the or, or because. They, if the Astros, if they would have just punished the Astros individually, the players, I feel like it wouldn't have been as bad. But here's the thing. We already know that these pitchers are going to go out and gun and hit the Astros. And they are going to get fined. And they might get suspended. And you know what's going to go back to? Well, none of the Astros got suspended. And they're, they're the cheaters. Well, so do you agree with that? Like, do you think that they should have they should have been able to... to uh suspend or punish the Astros player individually? Uh, I personally, I say yes. I mean, I say it from the stance that I would like the for, you know, all parties uh, to be held accountable for whoever was guilty, <laughs> right? So, you know, like I think when I think about it, a big reason I feel like uh, uh, this whole outrage with the national media and just the fans I think people are are believing that you know we got off easy, so you know people aren't getting punished as hard. Championships not being taken away, and also that's why everything is so uh, loud and outlandish now. You know, and I asked I asked Calvin this earlier, and I was like, "All right, man, like, well, like at this point, it's almost like what would you, almost like how would you feel if something like that would happen if the championship was taken away? You know, obviously." No one wants that. No one, no Astros fan wants that. But do you think the hate would stop? Do you think it would get better? Because then, you know, I think that it's like, okay, now people will say, oh, drastic measures were taken. Uh, are we going to not be treated as bad now? Or is it still going to happen either way? You know what I mean? Is it still going to be just as bad? Because I feel like right now it's bad because they, I think people think that the MLB is letting us off easy. You know? And so... I mean, I don't know. That's a tough question for me to answer because, and I'll, and I'll say this, just about the, all this, all this shit. When this, when this started, you know, you know, we had a very emotional podcast. Chris came on and said his thoughts, and I think for me, like, I felt a lot of the same way about it. I felt betrayed. I felt like, uh, you know, just like the trust was broken Word. for, for such uh, a beloved team and my home team and and the guys that I had rooted so hard for, spent money to go to these games um, and to buy their jerseys and, and their gear and whatnot, right? So there was there was like a feeling of heartbreak there. But now it's not that that feeling was ever lost. Like, you know, uh, right. I, didn't, I didn't get over that. But, I mean, I 100% feel sorry for them now. Like, they're, they're in such a position where it's like, dude, they shouldn't be getting death threats. They shouldn't be getting um, that the the hate that they're getting. You know what I mean? Like I, I think it all at the end of the day should be justified. And I think it's fucking stupid. Whatever the the energy of the media putting out. And I said it before. 
Like people that have gave no two shits about fucking baseball before are now putting out their own special media and their special video about let me let oh let me let me be a fucking Carmen San Diego de- a detective and um, and dissect this shit down uh, about the Astros and this and that and I feel like for whatever reason I don't know if it's a time we're in or whatever is somebody has to be the scapegoat for something but the Astros are the fucking ultimate scapegoat of the world even fucking LeBron James came out and said some shit about. Oh, you know, like nobody should ever be using advantage to blah, blah, blah. Like, fuck you, dude. Like, <laughs> no, 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 for real. Like, where was this energy for everybody else? Where's this energy for fucking Bill Belichick? You know, I don't even think the fucking steroids era was this bad when it comes to the amount of hate. LeBron James. Up. And and so I really like I want to see what happens. Let's say if there is a fucking actual investigation that's put out and then five, six, seven other teams are uh, found guilty for this shit or whatever too, or other players or other coaches or managers. Let me see that same energy because I don't think it'll happen. I think if it was any anybody else, and you know, you can say what you want about, oh yeah, oh yeah, we're just fucking boohoo and crying, whatever. Like I'm not. Like listen to what's going on. Look at what's going on. Like I'm okay with, uh, you know, us, you know, you giving uh, them a hard time, or whatever. But like to a certain extent, you know what I mean? Like don't be fucking threatening nobody's life. Um and whatnot, like yo, you can yell and holler all you want. That's fine, but I feel like to the to the extent it is now, it's it's to me uh, the the line has been crossed, and I just want to uh, feel like it's fair, and I don't feel like it's fair at this point. You know, and am I am I am I wrong? No, 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 no. You're not wrong. And here, here and, and here's the crazy thing about it. Like like, I mean, just listen to Yankee fans. They'll tell you that the worst thing that's ever happened to baseball is sign stealing. It's worse than steroid use. Although the Yankees benefited greatly from steroid use, we had a couple of uh, Houston known heroes that played on those Yankee teams that won championships that were that were shooting their asses left from right just so they can be relevant. And through the nineties, they were basically a steroid. Oh, factor. absolutely! I it, mean, you want to go down the list? You can go down Alex Rodriguez, number one; uh, Roger Clemens, number two; Andy Pettit, number three. Uh, Who was your famous catcher? Uh, Jason Giambi, another. Oh. Um, who who are you talking about? Oh, that was uh, Roger Clemens. Who's oh, the favorite? Oh, are you the, the, the catcher? Yeah, yeah. You Giambi, you said Giambi. Oh, well, he's first baseman. Mm-hmm. But like all these people benefited for steroids, and mind you, they won championships. 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 And you think they're the only ones that were doing steroids on that team? Hell no. But you know what makes you know you know how I know that this is this has become just a hate fest because that everybody's just benefiting, and you know a lot of these 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 beat writers who no one even fucking knew now get a chance to just say a shitty ass opinion. Is Garrett Cole recently came out and said, "Hey, listen." The Astros are in a hard place, but I can promise you that in 2018 and 2019, when I was there, they weren't doing anything. Right across the, the locker room, you got Judge saying, well, if they if they cheated in 2017, they probably cheated in 2018 and cheated in 2019 because the only reason why they didn't stop cheating then is because they didn't get caught. <laughs> and what drives me crazy is that if the Astros are such cheaters, and they've been cheating since 2017, and they've been che- cheating since 2018, and they've been cheating since, uh, since 2019, and you feel like they've just, just ruined the game of baseball and these stupid, shitty-ass, unwritten rules, then why the hell did you guys even pay Garrett Cole all that money? Because guess what? He was on those cheating-ass teams you keep talking about. See, here's the thing. As long as you're winning, no one cares. But when you're losing, and you haven't won since I was in high school, and that was a long time ago because I graduated in 2000, then all of a sudden you want to make excuses. You can't tell someone, you can't tell the Houston Astros and the players that they need to be accountable when you can't be accountable for your losing-ass teams. Because guess what? Atuve didn't take Judge MVP away. Judge took his MVP away by not being a better hitter and not showing up when he needed to show up in the playoffs. Because guess what? There was no cameras to be able to dictate how you're going to swing a bat. That falls on you, brother. That's all I got to say about that. Same thing with Cody Buttinger. Um Who? Does he play for the for the, for the, uh, the softball team? Women's softball team? Because that's what it sounds like to a- me. A- 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 L.A. Dodgers, in fact. Hey. <laughs> all right, so I want to segue into um, uh, a couple things. First of all, uh, 
Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, um, uh, even J.J. Watt have come out against the NFL CBA. Uh, the CBA, from a couple details, is they've added the 17th game. They've added another team into the playoffs. Second round, I mean, excuse me, the, the second place team in respective conferences would actually play in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, I think they were going to cap an extra game check at a hundred thousand uh, uh, dollars, I guess for a player or whatever. Um, but again, all these players come out against it. Why now? As a as a as a player, I guess you know you don't want to add another game. It's so hard in the beginning. But as a fan, would you want to see a seventeenth game? Would you want another team to have the chance to be in the playoff? No, not at all. Because I I I. I my favorite game to watch is football, you know, but I also care about the safety of the players. And it's bad enough that they risk so much as it is when they don't even get guaranteed contracts. And the way they're treated is ridiculous. But at the same time, I'm being told every year that the NFL cares so much about the player's safety. You can only wear this certain helmet. You can only wear certain that helmet. You can't, you can't hit up on top. You can't lower the crown. But you want them to play a couple extra games and not even compensate them properly, you're full of shit. All you care about is the, the bottom line. That is your pocket, the dollar that comes in, the revenue that comes in the NFL. And I think players understand that. And honestly, is is as much as shit we talk about um, the NBA or, or even Major League Baseball, at least those players are compensated properly and at least are represented properly. When it but comes to NFL. the NBA wants to add a in-season tournament. You heard well, about that, right? Yeah, they, that's not gonna that's not gonna fly. Them players, listen, listen. the The worst thing that the the NBA ever did was give the players too much power because you know they're like, <laughs> y'all tripping. That ain't gonna happen. But you know the NFL shares more the uh, the piece of the pie than than the NBA or the MLB. So basically, what I mean by that is they're saying that they'd go from forty eight percent of the profits of the NFL makes that go down to the players to forty eight point five. And that's still above any other. No, John. That's like like my my job telling me like, hey, I can't give you a dollar raise, but I can give you a five cents raise. You hear me? Say it again. That's that's like your job telling you like, hey, I can't give you a dollar raise, but I can give you a five cents raise. And you're like, it's five cents. And you're like, and they'll tell you straight to your face. Well, you got to think about it in a yearly estimation. Still not, still nowhere near the money that these players deserve. We can honestly say that in the NFL, these players put their lives on the line more than any other player. Unless you're the Houston Astros getting binged by uh, fastballs. The point being is that no other team or no other league gets that risk their life for very little. Right, right. I mean, who's the highest paid player in the NFL? Uh, let me see. Who had a? Oh, uh, no. I was gonna say Patrick Mahomes. Um, but he, he will be. He will be. Who He's is about the to highest be. paid player in the NFL? I, it's got to be over a hundred million. Something like Matt Stafford, I want to say. So I think Russell Wilson right is the highest paid player. Is he now? I think so. But how much of that money is guaranteed money? I mean, he's just one injury away from not getting paid. I mean, that that, that's true. that's the shitty part about this is like when you hear these contracts, you're like, oh, J.J. Watt's getting eighty five million dollars for the next five years. You got like, OK, well, how much of that's really going to go to him? Because, right, you know, at right. the end of the day, they're going to make sure that it's it's 40 or 50 percent of what that really is. That's true, because every time Tom Brady would sign a contract, it'd be like one hundred million dollars. But then like every year he'd restructure, restructure, you know, so it's like uh, I see why Tom Brady. He um, wanted to be a free agent this year. So where where? Oh, Chris, you're right. At $53 million. 53 in there, but how much of that is guaranteed money? Right, right. Uh, Russell Wilson. But you didn't say that. Is that, oh, I'm sorry, Russell Wilson. Um, But is that for one year? What is that number? I think so, yes. Four year, 140 million extension go. with uh, Jesus. 107 guaranteed. So 107 and million. Him, is. And that's the thing, though. The 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 C the CBA actually got passed through the representatives and then it will go on to every every yeah. uh, union member right so uh, the it got passed seventeen to fourteen but the fact that somebody like Russell Wilson who's the highest paid player in the league who's actually benefiting the most from the CBA as it is now um, 
for him to come out against it says a lot to me. I, I, I it would be one thing for somebody that's not making the benefits or or isn't doing as well in the current CBA to be against it, but it's not. It's the people that are higher up who actually have more to lose in a in a CBA that changes than a CBA that would stay the same. Well, that's because he realized that one or two extra games could possibly be in his career, and that means he's not going to get that $150 million that he's hoping to get. Listen, at the end of the day, money talks, bullshit walks, and these players put their life... I mean, think about it. The last two years, Russell Wilson has been one of the best quarterbacks considering he's had a shitty-ass offensive line. He's taking a lot of hits. A lot of hits this year, this year and last year. You know, he doesn't want to go home where he can no longer uh, have sex with Sierra. I'm just saying. <laughs> and, and I mean, I, I, I get it. You know what I mean? <sighs> what a waste. I'm just saying. I mean, nobody, you know, and, and, and you have to think about that, like the, the longevity. I mean, we saw the NFL, um, you know, for the, over the last, what, 75 years, not take care of their past players. It wasn't until recently when the whole concussion thing came out that they started making effort to take care of their players. But again, we're still not addressing how we're still going to take care of the players from this point on. Right, right. All we're saying is that you need to play more for us so we can get paid more and we'll give you an extra 5%. Right, get right. the fuck out of here with that. <laughs> All right, real quick, real quick. Uh, so the rumor is Philip Rivers is actually going to probably most likely be the next Colts quarterback. Right? Ooh. Ooh. Philip right. Rivers, but old man. That, that's Phillips. just that's just uh, um, um, what's it called? Speculation. Speculation, no, but that's the trade talk around. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Uh What are you doing in the alley to get this information, John? Right, right. Ah, uh, so Burroughs, does he does he get drafted by the Bengals? I know everyone's talking about his nine inch hands. I don't know what's going on with that? It's so so weird. weird, right? It's like, weird. Now we're talking about man's hands. It's I I I, I pray about hands since Trump. This he. I well, they talk about D Hop's hands. But he got big hands though, right? That's what I'm saying. He just, he has he has like what probably the biggest biggest hands. Really? For, hey John, you know if you if you can put your hand your your hand over your face, that means you got cancer. Okay. Let's once you do it, real fast. I, I, no, I'm not doing it. I just want to so see. you can slap my hand and. Why would I do that? You, you've been watching too much TikTok. <laughs> anyway, John talking about TikTok. He's young. Shoot, my son, my son keeps me young. <laughs> anyway, he's like I'm the I'm the main experience the experiment to my son. Like anything he he sees in TikTok, he's like, "Hey, Dad, hold this, Just don't move, stay right there, close your eyes, like get out of here before I drop kick you." And I really don't ever. Kick my son. <laughs> I'm just saying. I just don't want this Simple. whole. Any, anyways. Uh, Joe Burrow, number one. Yeah. I mean, so but I think he is, but uh, I don't know, man. And now all of a sudden he's he's backing away from wanting to play for Cincinnati, which I think it's like, dude, you're from that state. But see, that's not something he said though. I don't know. He okay, Tua came out and talked about the the, the Cowboys. And he, and he said he don't want to play for Detroit. Who wants to play for Detroit? Oh, yeah. okay. See, see. Well, who wants a, to play for the Bengals? A, right, exactly. I would only want to play for the Bengals if that. I see, I see, no, 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 I no. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I would bias. Listen, listen, listen. I would only want to play for a team that's shitty as a Cincinnati if that's my home, like my home state, my okay. home state team. To me, that makes a big difference. Like, I don't think there's any kid on earth that's never dreamed about playing for their own city's team. Right, right, right. If you don't want to play for your own city's team, which is probably Utah Jazz, that's probably the only thing that you don't ever want to play for. You know what I mean? Because I don't know anybody even that was that I know that even really came from Utah. Right, right. That wants to play for you. But anyways, sorry, Utah right. Jazz. Man. So uh, Tom Brady, where does he go? I, I personally believe the man's going to Vegas. Vegas. Hell Ooh. yeah, man. I mean, I'm being biased here because I really want. I really no longer. Yeah, he's. He, you know, uh, Gruden don't want. He, he wants. They're gonna come after. Tom Brady. So, Tom, uh, so uh, uh, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron um, what's his name? I, I can't. Uh, the coach for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He doesn't have a chance of getting Tom Brady. Come on now, man. Really? Who the hell is playing for Tampa Bay? Uh, Miami Dolphins. No chance. Tom Brady. Come on now, man. Who's playing for the Miami Dolphins? <laughs> I'm just first, saying. I'm throwing, first of all, can anybody? Ball, I haven't had hey, you first on the of show. all, can, can somebody agree with me that the Dolphins have to be the dumbest name for a football team ever? <laughs> Hey, Sorry. listen, they're still the, the only undefeated football team. And it, apparently, if they go to 17 games, it's going to be even harder. Well, listen. So, they're still the only undefeated team ever in the NFL. What was that, 1972? Uh, what? Still. Also, too, side note, Dolphins 
in mammals are the only, I mean, dolphins and humans are the only mammals on earth that have sex for pleasure. This one has to be on record. And they're promiscuous too. This is the Sports Chat <laughs> Podcast. I'm just saying. Here first. They're that's, called that's the Miami Dolphins. The they could have sure. been called anything EJ's, other. Needles, the Miami Sharks. Out of the night. Miami Stingrays. Something. But they're Miami Dolphins. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. So, anyways, all right. All right. Uh, so, here's my theory Vegas. No, here's my theory. Tom Brady and the reason they haven't talked to Dak Prescott until today. Uh oh. Since September. Dude. Is. Tom Brady is going to Dallas. He's not going to play for Cowboys. He's playing in Jerry World? No way, man. Listen, first you, of all. You don't think Jerry Jones been pulling them strings? No. Nobody wants to play for the Cowboys. What? Huh? Nobody wants to play for the Cowboys. Chris. I don't nobody know wants that. to play for the Cowboys. Except uh, people yeah, who are delusional about Cowboy fans. Like only Cowboy, only delusional Cowboy fans want to play for Cowboys. That's it. Okay. I don't know. I don't I I I, I can't I can't get on that boat with you. Why? Because that's not true. That's the number one franchise in football. Oh, regardless. my God. Listen. If you were an elite quarterback and you had a chance to go to Dallas, you, you're you saying no? Who are you it, throwing it, to? Uh, Randall Cobb, Amari Cooper. You want me to keep First going? of all, Amari Cooper is not coming back to Cowboys. He's not going to be able to pay Amari Cooper as well as be able to pay whoever they're trying to bring as far as quarterback goes. So if you think that they're going to give 40 bucks to Dak Prescott, you don't think that Amari Cooper is going to come back? I Listen, I'm telling you right now, Mark Cooper ain't coming back. Either way. He is not coming. They're not going to pay him that money. They're not. And Cobb, really? The, dude's, the dude is, is almost on his way out. The, the Cowboys. But, is it, but what does what Tom Brady use the most? Slot receiver. Okay. Cobb is a great slot receiver. The, whoever joins the Cowboys now have a coach that loves to throw the ball more than anything. He doesn't believe in the running game. Your strongest weapon is your running game. And the last time I checked, unless they, they go out there and spend money on an incredible amount of, of, of quarterbacks, Tom Brady is setting himself up for failure if he goes there. Just saying. All right. All right. Well, we'll see. But that's, I can't my, wait. My, my, Listen, that's my dark horse for I can't Tom, wait for the Tom Cowboys Brady. to be shitty as usual <laughs> so we can just, just, just like, like a dog, like a puppy. That's barely pony train, and they poop on your foot and your, rub who, their who, face and Who poop. do you think that the Tom Brady's gonna go to? I mean, I say Cowboys. Because I, 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 you're cause, a Cowboys fan. Hey, what? <laughs> do I look like Bravo to you? Get out of here. <coughs> oh, shout out oh. Bravo. Right. Dude, why not speaking, Vegas? Speaking, why not Vegas? Think about this, Gruden. Speaking of I, Vegas. I mean, that would be cool. I'm not saying it wouldn't. I'm just, I didn't see that happening, but shit, that'd be fucking cool. Tom Brady in Sin City. Woo! Wearing hey, all black and silver. Of Vegas. All black, all the the black knights, right? It's a it's a Vegas black knights, uh, the golden knights, golden knights. But this time it was a black knight. Last Saturday, uh, uh, oh shit, Dante Wilder. What? Woo. What the Versus hell was Tyson that? Tyson Fury. What the hell was he wearing? Deontay Deontay goes down in the seventh round after being knocked down what <laughs> two times, <laughs> right? <laughs> It's horrible. Bro. Tyson Fury is the undisputed champion after the first fight being a draw. Um, Which he won that fight. And Dante Wilder actually he invoked his cause or said to be invoking his cause for a rematch. Why? Uh, because because and you want to know why? And this is the big this is the Let me hear big this, point of, of continuously. He said. His walkout suit, oh. which was forty <laughs> pounds heavy. Which hey, listen, it was it was actually kind of cool looking because he had a glowing red outline of his eyes and a completely decked out diamond looking suit. It looked like old medieval times, and uh, was forty pounds. And by the time he got into the ring, he was tired. So the reason he lost is because he lost his legs. By the seventh round, his corner throws in the towel. Fights over. And uh, here we are now. About to see another third fight out of uh, a fight that Dante Wilder maybe have has won two rounds out of a possible 19. Listen, in order for Wilder to even even get a chance to fight for again, he has to actually beat Pinto B. Ruiz. See, but that's the thing. He's It's already in the clause. No, no, no. But they shouldn't be allowed because here's the thing. First of all, you're right. That costume was kind of tight. But then now that I know it's 40 pounds. 40 I, pounds. I have to question not only 
Wilder's uh, intelligence. Dude, try this shit on before the fucking... But who the fuck in this circle allowed that shit to happen? Yeah. Like, I'm firing everybody on my team. Bro, I think he wanted so much to have a fucking, like, WWE entrance. Well, then join WWE. This is fucking <laughs> boxing, man. This is this is real shit. Listen, I'm a wrestling fan, but this is some real shit. But Tyson said, and, and this is, a, this is a, uh, I, I'm paraphrasing. Tyson said by the 12th round, when he got knocked out, knocked out. He literally got knocked out and woke up. You, you're talking about wrestling. He woke up looking exactly like. Exactly like the Undertaker when he just like pops up, right? Uh, nothing short of just like that. He said when he got up, instead of backing away and trying to win the fight through just outpointing him at that point or just outlasting the bell, he started pressuring him. And at that moment, he knew that he couldn't fight on his back legs. So his whole game plan was to pressure him. And if you watch from round one, he starts walking him down the whole fight and it was pretty much i mean look at you look at you uh rex kellerman over here with the box analysis i like it man this is a sports trap podcast (laughs) where john gives you boxing insight hey man i like the fight game straight jab into your face i love it john i like that man but yeah man um now if you had the opportunity first of all do you believe in his excuse hell no man he lost because he got his ass beat because uh you know tyson is a better fighter than he is Uh, he and, we, and he proved that for, two, for two, someone to be six nine, six nine. Great story, he, by the way. He is all over the place. He's like, bloop, bloop, move around, stick and move, stick and move. Like he's like, I don't know. He he looks like his body should be in a smaller fighter. You know what I mean? But he's a, of course, he's a heavyweight, six foot nine. So let me ask you, uh, Anthony Joshua, uh, yeah, Anthony Joshua or. Um, uh, or Wilder, who would you rather see yeah, next I, fight? I want to see Joshua versus Fury. I did, I think Joshua is 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 a great fighter, and not only that, but I mean, it's obviously the battle of the Europeans, man. I mean, I mean, obviously, unfortunately, I I know reasons why. I didn't think Wilder to me was all that great, but I think everyone jumped behind him because he's our American heavyweight, man. Get over that bullshit, Wilder. Oh, no, but yeah, yeah, but he get, had a hell of a right he hand. He did, he, he does, but at the same time. Compared to those other two fighters, I just don't think I think he's just a, a stick in the wind. I just think that those guys are just better than him, and I think that I think we need to embrace um, who's going to be the king of of, <laughs> of of the heavyweights. I mean, those two are the are the two best fighters in the in the in the, in the division. Uh, I, I actually like your plan. I know I cut you off a little earlier, but I actually like your plan, um, and I think it'd be a way back for Wilder to to get back into the picture. I would like to see Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua go at it, right, for the rights of England, and let Dante Wilder and, and Ruiz box it out for the rights of P- of uh, U.S. champion. Pinto you know Bean I mean? Ruiz, make sure you get that right. Pinto Bean Ruiz, and uh, let you know maybe set set up a like a, a pseudo tournament and whatever. But because yeah, I think man. both of them have potential to be good fighters, I think they need to redeem themselves. And why can't this be the re- redemption fight? Because they those two need to show that they really are legitimate heavyweight contenders because whoever wins between Tyson and Anthony I mean who's who are they fighting next nobody at this point right 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 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we're going right. right back to the same weak ass heavyweight uh division that we've known for quite some time yeah yeah anything else you got for for me fellas before we do a little I want to do a little shout out before we end this um Eddie again man thank you so much shout out Red Rowdies uh Chris, happy 38. I didn't want to put your age out there I like mean, that. It's okay, but, man. 38, feeling you know, like man, I'm 28. I can't wait to get into this cake. I'm talking about the cake in front of me. Um, <laughs> and, uh, well, yeah, no man. More. No more. <laughs> I, 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 I got to be, you know, I got to watch out for you guys because y'all be taking everything to the nth degree. So, uh, But you're the one with the camouflage shirt trying to be all hey, discreet. Man, this is because I'm going in a battle mode. First of all, Rockets gonna go up against the Clippers pretty soon. You got you got uh, Astros coming through spring training. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, me the I'm I'm rocking with JJ Watt versus JJ Watt and Richard Sherman. Don't forget my boy Richard Sherman, and we're gonna battle against the uh, owners in the CBA. Also, go ahead and put out there Roughnecks are doing what they do best. Oh, thank Win you, thank games. you. I appreciate you brought that up, Roughnecks man. baby. My JP, um, excuse me, PJ Walker. Showing out, man, ex-Colt. 
The only Andrew Luck was the one that championed him. Uh, man, the, the, the some of them passes look like Patrick Mahomes to me. You know, I know how much you like Patrick Mahomes, but uh, he's my Mahomes. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. He's your home, my homie. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, uh, actually, I think the XFL is actually getting a raw, not a raw deal, but like I think that people aren't allowing the product to develop. You know, and that's because all the other. I guess I honestly believe it's because everybody else team sucks except for the Roughnecks. Uh, there, there's there's a couple like, but there's growing pains and everything, everything. Yeah. You know, um, but the Roughnecks look like they got it. They got the MVP, the best wide receiver. Um, they got uh, obviously the best coach so far. He's hit the ground running. We're three and zero. We're the only undefeated team. Yeah. Um, I hear that. Besides, I think Seattle. We're the best fans. And that's what that's what I'm what that's what me, you, and Eddie are talking about when it comes to Houston. We're actually passionate, real fans. And oh, it's the, showing up over there, U of what, H. What the great thing about the XFL is, it's let, allowing everybody to buy tickets because corporate hasn't come and just raided everything. Raided you know? everything. So, and no offense to corporations, I mean, I get what they're doing, and they, you know, they they do what they got to do, and you know, at the end of the day, everybody has to sell tickets, right? So. Um, you know, but at the when you you get to see the true colors of what Houston fans can be and do, man, we we show out, we show love. Let me ask you a question, because you know it's gonna happen soon, especially if the Roughnecks win it all. Do we actually see about somehow finding a way that the Texans play the rough Roughnecks? No, no, can I can I can I, can I finish? Nope. Can I finish? Can I finish in my dream world? Let's just say that this can't happen, right? And whoever wins gets to go to the NFL or stay in the NFL while the other team has to go play for the XFL. No, it would never. But we're in a locked out league. Legally, the the NFL would isn't allowed to do that. I'm just saying. They should give Will Fuller to the XFL though for Camp Phillips. Yo, that's a great call. You know know how how hell yeah, Trey. Will Fuller would look like a Lamborghini versus like. No, he would. Yeah, he would. Oh, he get hurt right away. He step on that fucking and be like, oh, broke a toe, he can't play. Shit. All right. Let me ask you this: Are we are we going to the game and then making to the championship? Fuck yeah, we are. You know where it's gonna be held? Here in, in Houston. Houston. Yeah, I heard it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're Hell yeah, we're going to the championship. I'm just saying. I'm down. I'm, I'm, re- I'm ready for uh, listen. The mo- championship. The moment that they paid homage to the Oilers of the past, I was sold. Those jerseys are tight. Our team is tight. I like the name. It wasn't as the road jerseys are tight. It wasn't stupid ass lame as what are we gonna call ourselves? Houston Texans. I mean, just I'm just saying. Shout, <laughs> out, shout out to Deshaun Watson because you know I love him. Bro. <laughs> Best quarterback in the NFL. Shout out, shout out the Houston J- Roughnecks, man. All right, fellas, you got anything else to say? I just want to do a quick shout out. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say thank you guys. I know you guys have been holding it down. I haven't been here, and I want to say thank you so much. And uh, it means a lot to be here today, especially for my birthday. Um, and I just want to shout out to to everybody who's been checking up on me. You know, dealing with some with some things in life. And uh, you know, I, I actually just really quickly wanted to uh, say this. I saw this little quote. Oh shit, I lost the quote. Anyways, anyways, it just basically says, I, I lost it somehow. It basically says that um, you know adversity. Um, introduces uh, demand to your to yourself, and so uh, I'm just been very very thankful and blessed that I've had you guys checking up on me and and being such great supporters of what I've been kind of going through, and then you know people like Josh Hoverson, shout out to you, uh, being such a great friend, and Jesse being a great friend, and then of course like uh, you know um, my cousin Paul, who I want to say uh, he turns he's actually gonna have his birthday. He was born on February 28th. So, his birthday. He's one of our number one fans, always watching the show. Um, so happy birthday to you, Paul. I love you. Um, to my uncle Junior, to all my family, of course. Um, uh, Christina, his his uh, lovely wife. Um, all my cousins, and you know, most importantly, my wife and my son, Daisy and Josh. I've been so incredible. They're so super talented. It makes me want to work harder, even for them, because of just how much they give to me. Um, but uh. Yeah, I just wanted to shout everybody out because I, I think that, uh, you know, in rough times, you really know how grateful you are when you see how much people love you and how much you're willing to go out their way just to just to say, hey, keep going, keep fighting. Don't keep your, you know, keep your head up. And I'm just truly grateful and truly appreciative. And most importantly, I'm just happy that I can actually do the show with you guys because that was definitely a missing piece. I'm glad I could do this with you guys. I miss you guys and I love you guys. And... Yeah, man. Thank you. That's all I want to say. For real. Much love, homie.
Much better. I know you said something about about uh you know Michael Jordan and, and I, I I am I'm grateful but I'm I, I'm before you humbled because I, I I never um look myself to be better than you. Like I, I I as much as you say you look up to me and stuff like that, like I uh I look up to you as well and uh you know uh, when I call you at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, like, you know, you know, damn nuisance, man. I think, right, right, I right. think I've called you more of those times. But I just want to be a record. I didn't say you played like Michael Jordan. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't say you played like Michael Jordan. I, I, I play like, um, like honestly, like you know, we're, we're being open and honest, man. Like uh, I felt like I don't play like Michael Jordan. I play like probably Trace McGrady or or Jason Williams. Um, I got that flair to my game. Uh, T Wack is what the, we call the John. Thing is, man, once I once I lose a like ten pounds, and you know I'm on my way. Um, you remember when you used to say you were like white chocolate, like Jason Williams, and I said like, nah, it's more like melted chocolate because that's what that <laughs> shit was. Garbage. Hey, this is what we do, man. Every Garbage. Day. This is why I love him and uh, 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 Koala, man. I have so much love for you and respect as well because we keep each other in check, keep each other humble because he ain't shit. He ain't shit, and uh, um, and you just smell like shit. So it's hard, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard sitting next to this hey, guy. Man, man. We always just try to. Give hey, why good. you got to put me in the spot? Come on, right, right. <laughs> and make sure you're closer. <laughs> All right, fellas, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Again, we are blessed. We're humbled. Uh, if you like the what what we do and how we do it, uh, we try to pride ourselves to be the people's podcast. So subscribe, like, share. Uh, Eddie again Thank you uh, Chris Happy birthday Qua uh, When is your birthday? Peaches and cream Oh I love that We talking about uh, 112 When is your birthday? Peaches and cream Oh January 12th Oh okay Yeah 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 Man it just passed Remember we went to Take him out for steak John Oh that's right 112 I get it Ah uh. <laughs> Anyways uh, Once if again If you don't this get that is... You're too young Right right Oh, nah, shit. nah, you ain't never too young to eat peaches of cream. Oh, <laughs> right there. What? Right. Cut what it, that cut being it. said, what? Cut it. this is the Sports Trap Podcast. It's lit. My name's John Trap, Christopher C. Rod Rodriguez, Qua, and I am out. Peace. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right oh, that's cool. Oh, I'm, I'm-